going on today, YouTube. Let's go ahead, get started here right now into the ZF5 4x4 swap. So this here is the holy grail of transmissions. For those of you that don't know what this is, this is the ZF5 speed transmission, mostly for the heavy duty trucks, for the 7.3, 460 that's the other one that's an even different pattern for the engine block and then for the 351s 302 you know they didn't really have any they didn't really have these equipped with the 300s normally but the pattern still fits a 300 transfer case is a bw 1356 heavy duty transfer case it was in the diesels like the 7.3s as well this was not original to this transmission this transmission had something different don't know what it was However, when it was installed, it was intended to go into another old body style Ford, and it never did. It's just a rebuilt transfer case sitting here waiting to get used. Everything else is zero miles, and I had the transmission rebuilt here not very long ago. It's just waiting to all go in finally and actually run this beast. Which leads me to say that it is the rarest setup to have a 300 inline six and the ZF five speed equipped all at once. The only thing I don't like about this is the fact they use this paint on there and it just started coming off and you know chipping after it sits out i don't know it looks good for like a month and then that happened so yeah that's what happens to this stuff when you do this <laughs> literally if you watched the previous video i had this running yesterday for the first time in two months and today i'm taking it apart again and making it non-running because i'm going to transfer over the transmissions and do this transplant now so when four by four gets here i'll be able to just swap it all through I just had to test out the 373s that I swapped in, and they are awesome. I can't wait till you guys get to see that video. If you haven't yet, go look at it. So the first thing that needs to be done is we have to remove the drive shaft out again. I just put it in yesterday. We gotta take that out, and then we gotta remove the cross member, and then we can drop the transmission. And we're just gonna swap over the other one. We're not gonna do anything at this point, simply because everything was swapped last year. So. There's no sense in me changing the throwout bearing again. There's no sense in me changing a rear main seal again. And there's definitely no sense in removing the pilot bearing and putting another one in when it's only got 20,000 miles on it. Okay, so the drive shaft is down. As you can see there, it's disconnected. Next thing we got to do is remove the starter up there. And we also got to take the O2 sensor out so we can take that out. And then we'll begin taking a, uh, the transmission apart and start removing the cross member up there. Okay. So, as you can see, the starter is out here. We're good on that. Sitting right here. There's the bolts for it. Next thing we're going to do is begin working on this cross member. We're going to get this transmission supported here because there is no drive shaft anymore. And we're also going to have to go ahead and begin removing the bell housing bolts while this is supported here because we don't want this to come undone and smash anything up because we're not replacing the pressure plate the clutch or any of that. So we're gonna go ahead and just put this all back together after it's after this transmission's out. But I gotta get a jack under it first. Not to elaborate on this, you have to take the seat out, it makes it easier to get this shifter off of here. And plus, we're taking it down anyway, so you don't want that in the way when you're going to put everything together. Or I mean, take it apart, so. Take this nut off here. And then you put it on the other side. Basically, it's like it's got a groove in here, or not a groove, but like a cut in here where it's oblong, so it pulls it together so that the shifter can't come out. And you take that nut off the back side here, and you just transfer it over. See, there it is right there. There's the stud. And that's it. You just thread this on and start tightening it down, and it'll pull. It'll pull. It'll pull this stud through this way. Right now I'm working these bell housing bolts, getting them all undone. One, two, three, four. That's done. I still got one way back in there and another right there. Soon this will be out.
Okay, I believe we have all the bell housing bolts disconnected in here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is begin taking the cross member apart and I'm gonna go ahead, jack up the transmission and support it before I start taking this apart because we do not want it sitting there just hanging by the main shaft or the input shaft. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna do that next. A two there, two back here we can see them oh, right there and then you just grab them from up top here very tough to see very hard to see they're very uh, up in here there we go and we need to disconnect our speedometer reverse and we are good to go on that see we don't even have any of that stuff so all that stuff's out of the vehicle already so we are good next thing we're going to do like i said remove this cross member and this will come out. We can drop the transmission. We gotta get the jack under here before we take the cross member out. It is an end of an era, pulling the original five speed out in trade for the ZF5. That's it. This will go in the 1976 Ford F100. Where do you want to put it? I'm gonna try to put it right here. Try to get this. Sure, it's not going to be too heavy on the side. It should be alright. Uh, you know what we need to do? Too? We should be able to get in there. Wait a minute. Gotta think real quick. We're going to try to get it just ahead. Right here. We can get it right ahead of the bracket there. Where at? Yeah. Where? Show me again. Right here. Where, Where do you are. want those ears at? On there. All right, filming getting the transmission in would be just painful to watch, so I'm gonna go ahead and torque down the new throwout bearing, or the old throwout bearing, to the new transmission. It's gonna be 14 to 19 foot-pounds of torque on that, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, I get it. Everybody's probably laughing at me because I should have installed the throwout bearing before I even put the transmission underneath the pickup truck. So now what we're going to do is get the engine lift out. And we're going to try to lift the transmission up from inside the cab. And then I'm going to go ahead and get my jack underneath of it and then try to jack the transmission back up into place and push it in. And then I'll hold it there with the jack till I get the cross member ready. So the hardest thing yet was actually mating the transmission to the engine block. Let me see if I can get a better. There we go. Very tough to see. Transmission is sitting up in there now. And there's the transfer case sitting up there. We got it support. We have the tail shaft supported by this jack here, the Daytona jack. We're going to pull this one out of here now, the red one. And then we're going to put this other one in that I have over here. I'm going to get that one in. Well, this is the four-wheel drive cross member we've needed. This gusset here is normal for a two-wheel drive, but this one here is a little bit longer, and they partially cut this. I mean, it's going to be all right, but I don't like that. First thing we're doing is we took the wheels off this is on account too if you already have the front axle you need everything from the four-wheel drive system to this the only things you're not going to need are the radius arms coil springs and shocks and if you're using the same year 
calipers. You do not need the calipers if you're using the same year of your truck. Yeah, I'm a bit under the weather, but um, the first thing we're gonna do here is hit every bolt with penetration fluid. I'm gonna do that, let it soak, and then begin taking parts off, and you'll be able to see in hyperlapse as we go here. Save some time. We got this part out here. We've got our sway bar disconnected at the mounting point. We've got the coil spring out. Now we gotta work on getting this out of here. And we also gotta get the shock out. And then we also actually have to drop the radius arm itself way back in there still. Other than that, we're gonna continue on. about 33 degrees out probably this morning we've got the axle arm out we've got the a arm out coil spring off we actually need to salvage the a arm for the four-wheel drive but look at that it's coming apart as we speak <laughs> This all has to come off to remove the axle. The actual pivot arm bolts itself have to come out to remove the axle. You need to remove the linkage for steering and your sway bar linkage and your shock mount. Other than that, it should come loose and also the brake line and you should be set.
see we got the axles actually torn out from underneath you saw the whole video there we did that in hyperlapse it saves a lot of time but it's very simple as you can see removing that front end there's only a few bolts there to get that down out of the way and for the four-wheel drive axles themselves now this here is our dana 44 it was rebuilt i didn't do it because i don't trust myself i'm going to drive this across the country like said before I painted all the insides myself before it went to the shop. So we did the pumpkin inside of the axle housings here. And it turned out pretty good. And then I'm using all Spicer U-joints for this build. Can't go wrong with Spicer. A whole mess in the garage to clean up. So next thing I got to do is clean all that out of there, set up a paint booth, and get those axles painted next. That probably won't be till this weekend. So... We're going to go ahead and pause on this for now. Okay, so the radius arms on the two-wheel drive truck do not fit four-wheel drive. So i got to finish prepping those before we can start painting and setting up in here for that. So that's what we're going to do next, and you'll get to see some of that on Hyperlapse. These are the pivot arms that I'm talking about, the radius arms. Yeah, they're pretty bad shape. They're going to need a little bit of fixing. Another paint booth behind me is the passenger side axle and over here is the driver side axle this is gonna be the actual differential there we're gonna paint it all right now and it's almost going on 11 o'clock here so we better get at it Well, as you can see here, I had a little bit of a run, but I got that cleared up. It looks awesome. Everything looks really nice so far. I mean, you just can't beat that. This is only primer though. Just wait for the paint.
and another batch of that ALK black up the industrial paint for the rear axle. We're making a fresh batch for the front. Look at that. That is just pretty. I just got finished laying the first coat of paint. It is looking really awesome so far. I think you guys are gonna love it. It is. It turned out great for having that run in there and getting it out and executing that finish. We're gonna go check it out right now. Well, now it's all painted, I'm going to bed. I'm pretty tired, it's about two in the morning right now. So I'm gonna go to bed, I gotta work tomorrow, and then we're gonna be right back at it. Okay, so first things first is, we're gonna start rebuilding this axle here on this side. We gotta get the axle shafts together. We gotta install our camber bushing, and then our upper and lower ball joints into the steering knuckles themselves. So the next major step in this is to rebuild this driver side first. We have our new camber bushing. We also have our lower and upper ball joints ready to install as well. We got to put the steering knuckle together and that's right there. So I'm not necessarily going to show you exactly how this is done. You're going to watch a step by step through hyperlapse and get an idea of how to do it. I'm sorry, I just don't have enough time to do that. I am trying to install it for you guys and put a video together that you guys are really going to enjoy. And it's going to have great film on there. That way you can see what I'm doing and really look at it and go over it and be able to do it yourself, hopefully. Not that hard of a task as long as you have the right tools. So let's go ahead and start rebuilding the steering knuckle on the driver's side and put the axles together with the new U-joints. However, before we do proceed, make sure when you do install your ball joints, Install the top one first, that way you have enough room to put the lower one in afterwards because if you do the lower one first, you're not going to be able to get the top one and there's not enough space. So take that tip with you. So when installing it, we're gonna probably put the axles in first, but I just wanted to go over that. When you install these, this is gonna go under here like this. i to pull this ball joint out of the way. And this one. And then you wanna work your way up with it. And basically that's just how it's gonna go in. And then you'll slide your camber bushing in right on there. And that'll be that. But I just wanted to demonstrate kind of how this is supposed to go in first before we go crazy. Just so you guys know what to expect when you begin your installation process with this. Okay, so we've made a fair amount of progress here. 
We've got the ball joints installed. We got the knuckles on here. We've got the brand new axles in, at least on the driver's side. We're working on the passenger side next. That'll be tomorrow. I'm gonna take a break now. These gotta be assembled yet. I gotta drive that bushing in up there. Other than that, this is gonna be ready to go pretty much tomorrow. Might be running tomorrow, possibly. Still gotta assemble the spindles as well. All right, we have the axle shafts assembled here. Now we're gonna take a look at the driver's side. Okay, there it is. Spindle is in, the axle has been placed in. Everything's tightened down, including all the ball joints, everything. This side's pretty much ready to go. All right, this knuckle's done. This is the passenger side one. Check it out. We've got the ball joints in here and here. We're gonna go ahead and assemble it to the axle itself now, the axle housing, just like this one. We are ready to go ahead and start putting this together. I'm going to put the passenger side axle in first because that's going to be the last thing we need to do is assemble this. And it's going to be much harder to get it in there with this already hanging up there. So we'll do this first, then we'll put this one in, and then we'll start putting the axle shaft in sitting over there. And we'll go from there. Officially, I have the four-wheel drive axles sitting in their mounted positions where the two-wheel drive axles were. There it is, as you can see, sitting up in there all pretty. I gotta get the control arm back under here. So once we get this control arm put under there and mounted, we're gonna go ahead and put the wheel together. We're gonna start pressing the wheel bearings in, put the oil sills in, and get the manual locking hubs in on the driver's side first. Then we're gonna hop over to the passenger side and start assembling that. So this here first, this nut here, with the actual nub sticking out goes on first.
there's the nub sticking right there. Now, you'll see there's a notch in this piece right here. You want that to line up on top of the hub on this side here. There it is right there sticking up. That's that keyway. It'll slide right over the keyway and onto that nub. Then once that is done, you're going to want to go ahead and put this nut on here. Now, this nut here, when you go to install it, it's going to be 80 foot-pounds of torque once you get it started on there. And you're going to want to have enough room that the actual rotor spins really freely on here, and then you'll torque this to 80 foot-pounds. So that's basically how you put this in, and then you begin installing your manual locking hubs afterwards. If you're anything having any troubles like me, um, you need the LM6034. Uh, if I can find it on here. It was on here. There it is. You need the LM603049 bearing. In my case, I needed it anyway. They say SA37. That's part of the kit for Timken and these other off-brand ones but didn't fit in the race the bearing didn't work so i just want to show somebody here real quick the issue that i encountered if you get a drive works bearing marked sa37 this is what happens it don't fit it's sitting around and they're spinning on top and it doesn't just fit over this it sits on here loosely and jiggles back and forth this is what you need is the Timken style, that part number that I listed. It'll be in the description too. See, it sits flush there, and then you'll just pound this seal in. As you can see here, we got the bearing put in. You didn't see me put, you didn't see me pack the bearing because I really missed it on the camera. However, I pack it till it starts coming out through the knee or through the uh, roller bearings each side, and then I just go ahead and pack them as best as I can, and then I put the oil seal in. We are good to go on this side. Out. Make sure the piece here is sticking up. That way it can catch on this. Once it's sitting on there, then this nut will sit on top of that. It'll go over the spindle as such. Most people have a dust shield, by the way. I don't. I just don't have the money, and none of them are in stock right now. I mean, I guess I do have the money, but nothing's in stock, honestly. Now remember, that first nut has the nub that's stuck out on it. You put that in first, then you put in this a, a washer behind it to keep it from moving, and then your nut that goes on the outer part there. Okay, doesn't matter how the outer nut goes on at all, it can go on either way. Um, next things next is we're gonna install the hubs.
Okay, now you can see how this works. Right now it's in free mode. Now we'll lock the hub. The hub is engaged, locked. Look at that. So that's exactly how it works and it's intended to work. Well, that's it for this evening. We're gonna take a break, come back at it tomorrow, and if we don't get it finished then, we're gonna take another break, and then we're gonna get it done, for real. So, don't go away just yet. This side is fully assembled. Check it out. Brake lines installed. We are good to go. By the way, again, rough country brake hose, stainless braided for a 90 to 96. Everything looks good. We got our metal clips in. We didn't do that on the other side, so I gotta fix that right now. So we are good to go. Gonna put this wheel on, and this side's done. Okay, so we're gonna fill up the differential fluid here. You can see our tube right there. We're gonna just open up the plug, put it in there. We're just gonna fill it up from the top here, the engine bay. Here's our line. So let's go ahead and do that next. Okay, so my dad's helping me here. He's putting the fluid in right now. We're using 80W90 high boy differential Lucas oil, only the best. And here we are underneath. That's where we're at with it. That's the tube going right in the differential. We're feeding it up through the engine bay there. And I put that zip tie on so it cannot come out. I think we're gonna be in pretty good shape when this is all said and done.
running again. We've got the actual four wheel drive in there. Sitting there with the manual walking hubs. We got our Dana 44 front end. This thing looks sweet. We lost a little bit of brake fluid bleeding them right there. But other than that, we just gotta take that zip tie off. We tightened up all the beams. So the pivot arm bushings are good. They're tight to the frame. And this thing can actually move now whenever I'm ready. driving a four-wheel drive Ford F-150 converter from two-wheel drive got the drive shaft up in there and it's running now it's kind of tough to see in here but yep it's running good so I am already stuck here so we're gonna test it out in four-wheel drive and see if it actually works and gets me out of this mud hole here we go <laughs> 